Thanks a lot for staying tuned. If you just joined us, this is TMI. And we're taking a look at the state of the nation, security situation. We're zooming in on the alert uh, uh, given to Nigerians by the U.S. They are suspecting a rise in terrorist attack. People have been talking about this. They're saying that Nigerian government should be wary. U.S. citizens should be wary. Don't forget the resignation of one of the top security personnel in this administration, a cited personnel, and of course, some other reasons, and that's the reason why he chose to resign. And don't forget also the murder of a traditional ruler, some call him a monarch in Sokoto. Yes, a video went viral when that monarch was asking for help, millions of naira. He talked about it. He played with the government, saying he worked for the government for about 35 years. He said these people that something should be done about it so that they'll release him. But help didn't get to him on time. And he was, according to some papers, gone down. According to some papers, lost his life. Whichever way these papers choose to paint it, a monarch died in captivity. Now that is just the underlying fact. People have been talking about that to the extent that Sokoto State became disturbed. Riots here and there because of what happened to one of their monarch. Citing the security threat alert issued by the US. How do you think Nigerians right now should respond? For what the CDS they are saying, they said, look, security is the responsibility of everyone. Give us information. Anyway, my analyst will throw more light on that. I want to start my introduction from my extreme left. He was one time on the Secretary Minister of Agriculture, a liberal devotee, political analyst. Join me to welcome Nashir Kadri. Welcome to TMI. I appreciate your comments, sir. Thank you, Lucy. All right. Sit very close to him, political analyst, political affairs commentator, Jeremy to welcome Christopher Jekere. Welcome to TMI's on this edition. Thank you. Good morning. Right. Yes. And the man sitting very close to me, a legal practitioner, political affairs commentator, Jeremy to welcome Godwin or Aikina, Thank you. Esquire. Thank you, welcome sir. to TMI. Thank you so much. Thank you. All right. It's like Nigeria is at a crossroad when we talk about security challenges. It didn't start today, but each one that is at the end of affairs always gave us this promise that they will tackle insecurity. And Nigerians are yet to see that promise being fulfilled. Call it the APC administration, the PDP administration. It's like We've not really gotten down to the root of this matter. For a monarch to die in captivity, some are saying he isn't the first monarch to die in captivity, but this is like a resounder because a video was made, an appeal was made, help didn't get to him on time. Let me start off from Bashir Kadri. What do you feel about this development? flag for Nigeria and terrorism. It's not a strange story. It's also not strange to hear that um, terrorists are again invading. What is strange is the fact that we have not been able to find solution to this problem. I think one of the reasons is that they what we call the causation. There are causal factors which have not been addressed. You don't address consequences. You're addressing consequences will not give you results. What gives you results is addressing the causal factors. There are causation. What are the causal factors? These are very clear. In Northern Nigeria, we all know, the surging population in Northern Nigeria is frightening. The lack of response by, by government on social responsibility is also an issue. And the economy is also an issue. And so you have the young people who are like army waiting to be hired by whoever has the money to pay them, and what whoever can feed them. These are the issues. We need to address this social issue. And that, of course, means that we have to find a way of bringing the economy back. We have to find a way of making sure that the younger ones have a future they can look up to. We also have to find a way of understanding 
that you have to be ahead of criminals to be able to overcome them. What has happened in our country is that we are behind the criminals. They are ahead of us. We need to be ahead of them. Everywhere in the world there are crimes. But what makes that crime not as, as threatening is that if the country is ahead of the criminals. As they are acting, something is happening. Of course, recently you saw what happened in the US where Donald Trump was shot while he was campaigning. It's, 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 it's a threat. It's part of the issue. But what is fundamental is that that person who did that work, before he finished what he was doing, he was already taken out. Recently, you also watch, I, I saw a clip, whether it is true or not, because in politics anybody can say anything, and they can do all kind of uh, what we call a, a rat matas, using um, a theater, and of course facade, to propagate what they want to say. But what I saw was that a young man walked up to Trump while he was campaigning in the, in the podium, and slapped him and jumped away. So these things are natural things in human society, but how are you able to overcome them, curb them, nip them, is what makes the difference. So I think what has happened here is that it's not lack of law, it is that people have refused to do what they need to do to make the law work. All right. So for me, we need to look at what is the causation. Causation. All of the government from 1999 to date, we've been about security, security, security. Nobody has addressed the issue of what are the causal factors. Okay. It's only... Sorry, before I anchor this, it is only uh, Yaradua who addressed the issue and said, let us go to the causal factors. And that was how he came to Niger Delta. And he said, look, these people are our children. We can't be killing them. Let us find a way. What is the problem? And that was how a lot of the, our people in Niger Delta here in this part of the world went to overseas, sent them overseas to train them in different aspects of oil business. And it, that brought some extreme level of sanity to that society. So oh, what is wrong with addressing the social issues that are happening in other Nigeria so that we can find a way of, like I said, we have to be ahead of the criminals. Otherwise, they will overcome us. All right. Thank you so, so much uh, for opening this discussion. Well, all the way from Germany, joining us via Zoom is Benjamin Mayor. Benjamin, how are you doing over there? Thank you. Good morning. Thank you for having me. All right. All right. So later... Uh, all right, we'll come over there to join you to get to hear your views and opinions on this particular discussion. Benjamin is a public affairs commentator and, of course, a very active politician in Nigeria. Do over there, when you start talking, you get to hear who he has sympathy for. Let me come to Comrade Christopher. You heard what Bashir Kadri talked about. He said it's like we are behind this criminal element. They are always ahead of us. Now, what do you have to say about this? Well, I think security issues are getting more complex by the day. It is no longer the uh, 2009 Boko Haram issue. It's uh, since then developed a lot of arms. We had Israel coming in, and then we have so many other things coming in which we cannot even analyze. Uh, the complexity reflects one thing, and that is that you have a, I mean, uh, first of all, all of the factors that uh, Mr. Kadri highlighted. But inclusive of that is you have very failed intelligence uh, among the security forces. And uh, that failed intelligence has been traced back in the course of analysis over the years to many factors. There have been questions about uh, our own security personnel being members of the very terrorist groups and bandits who want to fight. I mean, there have been loads of evidence of that. We've had situations where people would be uh, taking briefs, security briefs, under their commander, and uh, shortly after that, information have got to the terrorists and then they are hijacked on the way and destroyed. We've had terrorists going straight into our defense, uh, uh, what do you call it, barrack in, in uh, Kaduna also, I'm not Kaduna, um, Bono, no, no. and then uh, cutting away, you know, <laughs> a, a plane or a jet. So the, the issues are complex. It is now compounded by what is now happening around our neighboring states. Uh, the, the, we cannot undermine the effects of the things happening around the neighboring states of Niger, um, Burkina Faso, and Mali. The other day we had our end hunger protest in Nigeria. It was strange that what was supposed to be purely a Nigerian affair to end hunger. Um, it was strange what was discovered when we saw flags 
of, uh, of you know, the Kremlin, uh, sorry, Russia. 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 And then a couple of people were arrested who uh, were making the flags and all of that. So when you have such convergence of different ideologies and the government not being on top of the situation, as uh, Mr. Kadiri said, and you have failed intel, it just continues to be more complex because you really don't know where to go. Um, for me, it is not a coincidence that the CDS is resigning at this time. Well, um, he hasn't said anything, so we're not going to second guess him here. But I can assure you that from, we've had our man there very close home here, Lucky Rabo, and so on and so forth, and, and they made useful statements. I remember when one, uh, is akin to May, a Navar, retired Navajo officer from the Southwest, uh, came boldly on television one time to say, the president knows the people behind terrorism in Nigeria, the fights are on their table, the ministers knows, the senators knows, uh, I mean, no, the ministers know, the president knows. He said it, and he was invited by DSS, if you remember. Mm -hmm. He went there within a short, uh, after a few hours, he was released. So there is, there is we, if we want to get to brass tags, the government and our security agencies need a lot of uh, things to reveal. All right. Yes, uh, about why we are not solving, why it's becoming an intractable problem. Okay, yes. I'll come back to you, comrade. Well, Barrister Godwin Oikina, I believe in listening. You've been monitoring the trend. Uh, it's like the security situation is slippery, so to speak. Some of the Senate is getting more, and more murky and more confusing. I mean, for U.S. to issue this a lot, this isn't the first time, but it's like the thing reduced and Rao is coming back to choke us as a nation. What's your take on this? Well, according to what my, learning, my good uh, discussion have said, we should adopt. Besides that, I think the problem with Nigerian security is rooted back to the fact that government in place, right from without whatever from exception, have never actually given the security department the people that needed it. What we do, you see, is nepotism. People talented to handle the area do not get it. A nation like that will never develop. If you recall, before German unification of 1870, Bismarck became the leader, the first chancellor of Germany. And he said the problem of Germany cannot be solved by parliamentary debate and democracy. You want to overhaul the system. First policy he made was career open to talents. You don't have to pick a man because it's your tribe man who has no idea about what is going on. It's now the security uh, officer. Based because of relationship. Without experience, without idea. What do you expect from that? There are good people who could have done it. Oh, you see a Fulani, you see a Yoruba. As long as we continue to adopt that system, infiltrate the system with people who have no idea of what to do, without capacity, mediocres, with, with, with meritocracy instead of meritocracy, the security apparatus are collapsed. They don't even know what to do. They don't gather information. You have DSS. You have army. You have police. People who are unknown government officials, who are not government security, can come in their life and say, I'm going to attack a government parastata, a government office, block the road. And yet we have Air Force. What are we talking about? Who are the people manning this area? Are they actually qualified to be there? That is the greatest problem we have. Until we go back to think there is mediocrity, mediocrity, meritocracy in appointment. Look at the whole security apparatus now. I mean, police are all one-sided. What do you expect from that? So you believe the formation right now? Formation. I think the government has failed. As long as you use nepotism to appoint these persons, you can never get any result. All right. All right. I'll come back to you, Barrett. Now, let's get straight down to Germany, where Benjamin Mayor is standing by. According to the piece of the newspaper, Someone is accusing Nuri Badu that is not the man fit for the job. Reason the papers get to say that he isn't supposed to be there because of what is happening after all. This administration promised us to, like, you know, tackle insecurity. Right now, I have a national security advisor uh, to some. 
he's not doing his best. Benjamin, what do you feel about that? Um, uh, good morning. Good morning, my fellow Eda brothers in the studio and the good people of Nigeria. First of all, I would like to say, uh, I will first of all give kudos to the National Intelligence Agency's uh, director, or the, the head who resigned uh, yesterday or so. I think that's the first in history in Nigeria for a top official in Nigerian government to resign. Uh, it's, it has become our culture, even when the system is collapsing, that we do not resign, we will keep, just keep pushing. His resignation is coming uh, at the very right time, and that shows a very, very, uh, it sent a very strong signal to Nigerians and to the world at large. The minister of uh, No Ribadu that you just mentioned, the question we need to ask ourselves, are they, um, the people who were appointed, are they actually um, qualified to be there? Have they read anything that has to do with security and securing the nation and gathering intelligence that will secure the nation? Like you said, like most of my other brothers in the studio said, the uh, the U.S. warning to the Nigerian regarding the uh, terrorist attack being planned and all that is not a new thing that has been coming up and it has been accurate. It has always been accurate. So the accuracy of the U.S., warning has led to so many destruction in Nigeria. But that is to tell you the Nigerian security apparatus has become so laughable that the other country had to do our job for us. And that is something that we all need to come together and have everything. You know, I want to point it this way. If you, Mr. Wilson, who is at the studio, you are not qualified to do the job that you are doing, there is 100 percent or rather let me say 90 percent chances that the people you are going to employ around you are also going not to be qualified so you're also going to employ a half big people like you to manage other departments around you we have it we have professors in nigeria we have doctors who have who have written so many books who have who are well read across the borders the question i keep asking myself why are these people not be given opportunity to save their fatherland? When it comes to the issue of security, go and check Nigerians' profiles abroad, especially in the US military, Air Force, Navy, or even in the England. You will see plenty of Nigerians that are capable, who are serving a very sensitive position. This book can be called home. Come and do this for us. You know, in Nigeria, it's all about political appointment. Even when you want to employ a doctor in the hospital, it has to be political appointment. If you don't know anybody and you have, you didn't work for the present administration to become that particular, uh, to, 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 to claim that particular seat, you will not be given that opportunity. That is why you see a doctor serving in the bank or you see a doctor doing the job of a, a lawyer. So all those things, has, all those things, we have a lot of issues in Nigeria that is facing insecurity. Like what the first speaker said, we have to look at what is causing the problem. You cannot solve a problem without, first of all, finding the root. He has applied so many factors, or so many causations that is bringing insecurity into Nigeria. But I think two or three things is missing, which I would like to add to it. First of all, is poverty. Poverty and lack of education. When you are not educated, when you are not educated, when somebody says you something that is harmful, you can't read, you don't know what that means, you don't know what it takes, you will definitely take it in. Affecting Nigerians, especially our dear brothers from the northern part of the country. The poverty in that particular region is so, so alarming that it is even affecting other states because they are starting migrating to other states. We have to deal with it. The leaders in those regions, the political leaders have perpetually impoverish the good people of Nigeria, especially in the northern part of the country, without investing in education. All the oh. governors are keep looting and looting and looting without investing in education. You first of okay. all invest in education, we eradicate poverty. This will bring down the level of crimes and insecurity in the northern part of the country. All right. Thank, thank you, Benjamin. I, I will come back to you. Well, you, you've heard other discussions and, and something just keeps on coming up.
round pegs in round holes, square pegs in square holes. For the DG of one of our intelligence agency to go to Mr. President and said, look, sir, I can't do this, citing personal family reasons. Has it got into that? Does it mean that we are losing this war? Well, um, I'll tell you, Wilson, um, history have told us that when you are getting to a point where you are not going to ask questions, then there are solutions coming on board. i give you an example. Japan, when they had their problem after the Hiroshima and Nagasaki war, they had to sit back and close their doors to the world. I said, look, we have to solve our problems. Go nowhere. We must solve it here. And that was how the problem was solved. And today, Japan is one of the flyers in the world, both in economics and just mention them. They have been on balance of payment surplus for so many years now. And many countries look up to them. And I'm sure there's no home in Nigeria or in Africa or in the world that don't have Japanese products. That was a function of the fact that they said, look, we are now in the world, we must either solve it or we are gone. And they solved it. So for me, I don't lament. I don't believe lamentation. I believe that if it's thinkable, it is doable. Where we are now, we have got to a point. I mean, we have made all these points. Everybody here has spoken extensively and very clearly too. One of the issues is that there's a fundamental problem in our country. And that problem is the issue of tribal definition, religious analysis, and all kind of discussion that are so primordial that do not have a progressive tendency. Intellectual material are not functions of any community. Every community have the best, they have the worst. And so when you tell me that you want to get, you must be from somewhere, I said, no, let us get the best. Look at the elections going on in the country. And people say it's, my, it's our turn. Even the universities, where you have the source of material, human resource development, and they, they, they bring up my resource. Look at what happens. In some of the cases, you find a lecturer getting involved himself with student projects. And that student will become a leader tomorrow. How do you explain? You know, I'm just going to the, I'm just telling you why I said must go to the, to the causation. Because when you breed people from a point of defect, from the very beginning, you can't expect the best to come out from there. And when they become whatever they be, then that must play. Because your foundation resonates at a point in life. You cannot give what you don't have. If you don't, if you're not trained in English, you cannot speak English. Even if you speak, you speak, you speak English in your own native, native, native tongue. You know. So for me, the time has come. You know, one lament. I don't believe in lament because if you lament the tomorrow, in fact, people are happy that we are where we are. Some of these countries are, are, are happy that where we are. So in this country are happy. When they come, they speak, oh, Nigeria. But when we go, they say, look, don't mind them. They're happy the way they are. Just imagine mm -hmm. you go to some countries in this Africa. I don't want to create issues of trying to do uh, what they call it, xenophobia, like you had in South Africa. In South Africa. I don't want to make that statement here. But the fact is that some countries in, this, in, this, in Africa today, when they hear Nigerian man's name, they're angry. They see your business doing well in their country, they're angry. You come and you are doing your mind job, very low job, you are paid small. They say you are taking their job from there. You know, and these are the issues. So we, we, it is time we must sit back now and say, Nigeria, let's, let's harness and harvest our potentials. We are a great country. We have so much potentials to harness. Whether in human resource, whether in material resource. And what is important is that we must begin to now readdress and rejig. Let me tell you an example. What happened in Indonesia some years ago. Indonesia was one of the low countries in the world. Some of us know the story. Today, they are flyers. What happened? One of the president, I can't remember his real name now. What did he do? He said the economy is in the canvas. We must bring it back. And people, people were complaining. He said, President, we're bringing the economy back. We come and say, OK, fine. He advertised. He said, I want an economist to come and be an economic advisor to the country. And it, the people applied. And those guys were talking. They were talking. They were talking. They applied. Because, you see, governance is not about theory. It's about practice. Practical, yeah. There, there, there are a few gaps between theory and practice. Mm -hmm. And that, is, that will explain that you have what it takes to drive the process. And what now happened? He told them. He said, look, when they now brought them for the final interview, 
after the interview, somebody succeeded. He said, look, those of you who have succeeded, listen to me. If in the next one year, the economy is not back, I'll kill you. A lot of them ran. They ran. They escaped. They, they, they didn't want to they run. You see, you see, sometimes, you know, that's why I said sometimes, yes, I like democracy. But sometimes democracy also has its own other side. For developing countries, democracy has the, has the hard line. And why? Because a scholar in the University of Lagos many years ago, Professor Momo, what did he say? He said, he said democracy is ruled by mobs. Because the crowd you have may, may not be the best of the brains. Sometimes a lot of them are the people who are not, who don't even understand what it is of governance. So they do the election, and the, the crowd wins the election. And everybody says the election has been won. <laughs> so what happens? The person that is, that, that is now there becomes the leader. Whether you like it or not, he's not elected as a president. And he drives the process. Whether he's doing well or not, yes, fine. Because why? The crowd will clap and everybody will say, yes, Hosanna. Whereas the real thing is that the, the, the system is on the canvas. Now, let me come here finally before I, I stop. I tell you this. Imagine that even the family unit today in Nigeria has collapsed. I'm a real, that's why I said we must do what we call a causal, causal factor research. The family has collapsed. We have more houses now than homes. And these children from these areas of collapse are those you hire to become military officers, police officers. And many a time when we advertise we want to employ police, people are bringing their worst to, to enter the police, bringing their worst to enter the army, bringing their worst to enter naval force. And they say because the boy is a very stubborn boy, you push him there. When the boy do not even, it's not stable, it's, it's, it's psychic, psychically unstable, you pull him there. What do you expect from that kind of organization? You expect something fantastic? They're beautiful. There are good ones among them who are still very straight-headed and sound. But the issue is that when it comes to who becomes what, you must understand that the employment criteria are fundamental to the quality of the human resource in All an right. organization. All right. And if those criteria are defective, mm -hmm. what you have is what you're just seeing. So for me, I do not believe in lamentation. Nigerians who must rise. This country must change. The presidency must now do the needful. needful. Use your acts to do who is not necessary and take a country back. Because the reason is that history will quote that in your time, change came or there was no change. No change. Okay. Well, uh, uh, come on, Christopher, you, you've heard of it's like we're still hammering on the same thing. Now there's a resignation already. Do you think this would change the narrative in case, uh, uh, let's say, in terms of security architecture in Nigeria? Do you see Mr. President diving deep into the situation after a someone voluntarily resigned? Do you see him reshuffling the cabinet when you talk about uh, a security hierarchy? Well, um, when, uh, sorry, permit me, was it Emmanuel that was his name? Uh, uh, mayor. Mayor was talking. He yes. said the resignation is apt that it came at the right time because it will send signals. Yes. And uh, we are hoping that the signals it sends, um, the presidency or the president and those in authority will be able to interpret it correctly. It oh. is... Interpret it correctly. Correctly, yes. Please, throw more light on that uh, comment you just made about interpreting this resignation well, it correctly. Not, it is not an improved profile anywhere in the world if your hmm. chief uh, defense uh, secretary is resigning mm. at the time when the nation needs him more to give his service. Whatever reason he's citing, now I said earlier that we don't want to second guess him because we have to respect his own, uh, uh, what do you call it, uh, excuse or uh, reason he advanced. He said it's for personal reason. So it would be wrong for me to begin to now second guess yeah. that personal reason. But it does not improve the profile of any government if top officials that are holding critical positions are resigning, and especially when it is security position. So I would expect that the president should ponder very seriously about this. Um, Kadri was talking about sitting down and using the ax. Yeah. Because I, when he was saying, I was asking myself, can I really analyze the priority of the administration that should use the ax? Because you see, every administration's priority becomes obvious in these first 100 days of office. In the terms also of those you have around you, if we have a Senate president, for instance, who mocks when Nigerians want to protest, 
something as basic and fundamental as, you know, uh, hunger, which is an existential threat in its own. If that is the sum total of the worldview of that person, holding such a critical position of authority, then who will bear the cards? You see, so whereas that we are not going to begin to advocate here for a violent revolution, there is a need for intellectual revolution. There's a need for us Nigerians, and I like his spirit because I'm like that. I don't believe in you know, uh, complaints and lamentations. Mm -hmm. I believe that people should take responsibilities. And it doesn't always have to come from the government of the day. The truth of the matter is that whatever you say as government, whatever propaganda you put out there, intelligent people know that what you are saying is not the correct situation and it's not the correct uh, you know, uh, solutions that you are offering. So such intelligent people, in the case of Nigeria, are many. But what is missing here is pragmatism. People, intelligent people are not getting together to say, you see, let us face it. These guys can't do this job. Let's come together and find ways to do this job. Because the country is ours. We've got to do this job. I believe in such alternative you know, uh, 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 responses to problems. So and I think we should, it's time we begin to consider that very, very seriously. It will not start at the national front. It will start in the, in the smaller units, like in Edo State, for instance. If you are lucky that you have a governor who is upwardly uh, mobile and forward thinking and progressive in mind and is able to organize that, fine. But if not, the civil society can do that. If not, um, intelligentsia in society around that community can do that. So that we begin to have revolutions, intellectual revolutions, that are changing things. I belong to um, um, a group called On One Conscience. And I think he's a prof. He's been advocating there. He said, look, let's set up an uh, economic development community for I mean, a committee for one. Because it's clear to everybody now that governments of the day, when I'm talking about national and subnational governments, are overwhelmed. They are overwhelmed. Yes, yeah, so by <coughs> situations. Right. OK. Yes. All right, yeah, I'll come back to you. Now, I, I want to pick uh, take off from his last, last comment, said the government of the day, but national, state, local government have been overwhelmed. And Benjamin talked about poverty and education. But do you feel that if poverty is like almost not one percent eradicated and the people up there are educated, do you think all this will reduce or stop totally, Barrister? You see, a hungry man has no integrity mm. and has no conscience. Can't imagine a man with, no, with six children no food in a day. You are telling him to be in a, in a patriotic. Mm. What is patriotism? What led to French Revolution of 1789? Because of price of bread have increased. It will not go to the level of Nigeria now where people are picking arms on the road. And some people are leading affluence, buying more planes and more yachts. No investment on youths. Factories are closing down. Government is not interested. Many of them go gallivanting, going to parliamentary debate, uh, joining to uh, U Europe, America, carrying large crowd of people. Agriculture is neglected. No security. That is the major issue. People don't go to farms. And the, there is no, the, what call it, it's subsistence farming that's succeeding in Nigeria. Certainly. And then they can no longer farm because terrorists have taken over their farms. And government is not interested. The, the thing boils down to the same issue that whether the people giving a job actually merited them. But they have said the government deployed soldiers to take care of the farmers in their farmland in the north. It's not true. I, I happened to go to the north when I was a, a young man, when I finished secondary school. Went to Kaduna. There was no part of the north I had not gone, gone to. The place was just to the villages. Less in Edo State. They are on the main road. Controlling traffic. Doing what they want to do. And terrorists are inside the bush. <laughs> it's, it's that hard to control uh, terrorism. The people, I don't want to mention some villages. For now, I no longer, apart from Ekuma, I no longer go to anywhere. Because... 
the, the villager will inform it. These people are here, as we are saying, issue of nepotism. Before they get there, somebody has leaked it. They move mm -hmm. again. That is the issue. The man retiring or resigning, we don't know the reason. It could be despondent about his position. If he cannot give authority, give directive to his junior. Mm -hmm. And what am I doing here? What am I supposed to do? Under junior to me is handling it. So let me go. I'm not going to charge. That shows the whole security network has collapsed in Nigeria. The man there, the president, he should take a hard look and the effect of what? Of that. If there is no security, can he remain as a president? There is a lot they want to attack Nigeria. Who, where would they attack? What has he done? Maybe it, he will look for another country to travel to. Not focusing on what's happening in the country. That is the major issue. If he understands what his position is, that is the major issue. But so many people tell him, don't, don't mind it. But that is, he has to sit down. He has advisor, attorney general. Can they actually tell him the truth? Because they want to retain their jobs. And that is the major problem in Nigeria. Hmm. Job retention. No matter yes. what is happening, do not resign. But this man took the first time. I think he's like the first in Nigeria to do that. And the security apparatus was like, you know, as highly placed as this man is, a DG was like, I can't take this. I just can't. And he turned into resignation. Well, Benjamin, uh, you've heard the analysts here in the studio. And now that this alert has been issued, what do you think Mr. President should do? Because whenever there's an alert, very point from the U.S., like what you said, it's a shame that they are telling us that this is what is happening instead of us to know what is going to come to us. They are telling us that, guys, be prepared. There'll be an increase in attack. What do you think Mr. President should do right now to at least reduce this attack or better still, take these terrorists off the board? Um, the president, you said, supposed to know what you have done if... Um, if it's actually acclimatized with the situation, with the security, uh, security situation in Nigeria, in quote, uh, I want to use other country to make uh, an example. Uh, two days ago and yesterday, there was a terrorist attack here in Germany and in France. And this information was given like a month ago. The citizens should avoid things like that, should be security conscious and all that. And the security apparatus and the, uh, the, the, the leaders of the country didn't just fold their hands and be waiting. They started walking. And leaders keep talking to the citizens. He's speaking to the citizens daily just to create that trust between the government and the citizens. In Nigeria, we have a president that doesn't speak to the citizens, even when he's forced to speak to the citizens, or even being compared to speak to the citizens, it will do a pre-recorded program. And the body language will tell you, I'm doing it because I just want to do it. It's not because he feels that that is the way, or that is the best way to communicate his feeling, or to sympathize with the Nigerian people. Many would disagree this with this comment of yours. Okay. Many will disagree. Okay, I understand. Many will disagree. I am telling you, since when he became the president of Nigeria, how many times, how many times as a president of a nation, has he come out to address issues like this? At least once in a while. Let's have a media chat. Let's have a media chat. Let's talk to the Nigerian citizen, just like what uh, Good Luck Jonathan was doing. Nothing like that is going on. By now, there should have been a security joint meeting with all the security agencies, leaders coming together to say, okay, this is what we have heard, this is what we have heard. Nigerians should remain calm to go about their normal business. We are on top of the situation. Since I was born, I've heard Nigerian security agencies always saying that we are on top of the situation. Where they are, they are not even, they are not even close to below the situation. They always say we are on top of the situation. And at the same time, the people who are perpetrating these crimes, these crimes will still be carried out smoothly. Like what my dear brother in the studio said, Trump was try, uh, they tried to assassinate Trump, but the target, or rather the threat, was taken out immediately without 
saying, ah, we are still looking for the person. No. Those people that I just made mention, the attack that happened in Germany and happened in France, the people that committed this crime, it, it didn't take up to like five minutes and they were all apprehended. They were apprehended. Now, you look at it. I saw an uh, online day for yesterday, an investigative journalist who have remained anonymous for a very long time. They call it the, uh, the Pidium Nigeria. This guy was arrested in his own house. They was they, he was traced down in his own house and he was arrested. So if you can trace such person who is an anonymous through his telephone number or through other means or maybe IP or something, you want to tell me the bandits who are terrorizing a particular region in Nigeria, the terrorists cannot also not be arrested. The security issues in Nigeria is like what the other brother said in the studio is benefiting some set of people. People are the ones sponsoring it. It's benefiting them. And they are okay with the situation in Nigeria. You don't want to tell me that this thing cannot be solved. It can't be solved. If U.S. can see what is happening in Nigeria, do you know how many kilometers away from Nigeria that U.S. is? If U.S. can monitor what is happening in Nigeria and tell Nigeria this is what is going to happen, you want to tell me that Nigeria cannot afford it upon all the money that we are spending on things that are irrelevant? Going on different conferences that we spend billions upon billions buying cars that buying cars just to show that we have the money to buy it spending money on private jet on things that will not bring benefit that will not add value to the citizens of nigeria yes we can do it we know what we are doing this is where we find ourselves this is not a program or i am not an advocate of violent protest or violent revolution but things need to change. And the government of the day cannot change things except the citizens say, this is how we want it to be done. Until we do this, until we begin to hold our government leaders accountable of the policies they put in place, or being remaining docile without doing anything, we will continue to remain where we are. We can't continue to do the, the, the same thing and, and, and expect a different result. You cannot. You cannot put the beans under your boot here and you're expecting that beans to done while you are shouting Holy Ghost fire or you are waiting for someone to come and cook it for you. It is a process. We need to follow that process. We first of all need to find where we all lost it long time ago. As far back 2009, or two, yeah, 2009, 2003, when Boko Haram started, this issue could have been called. No, it wasn't called. We just allowed it to explode it, and it took it expanding and it took it expanding. Another issue that I want to round up with the security agencies is very, very less equipped. They are not equipped to that extent. They will say, we will do this, and Nigerians will believe them. No, they are not equipped. They are not even responding to a 911 call if somebody, uh, if an accident on the road, or somebody is being kidnapped or something, or that is too fighting and all that. I you not expect a security agency who does not even have a standby moving vehicle to respond to a distress call to go and respond to a terrorist organization or who want to co co commit a crime. A monarch was adopted in his own palace or in the other in his own state and who was along the line during his being in captivity and he was murdered, he was killed. And you are not telling us that all those things. And this man made it and made in the video and appealing all to right. Nigerians. Please all help right. us to do this. And at the end of the day, he died in, captiv in, in, in captivity. If such caliber or human being can face such an inhuman crime that being meted on him, who are we on the on, normal human being on the street? We Thank need you, to start Benjamin. Talking. Thank you. Thank you. We, we can just go on and on talking about this, but one thing is sure. We need adequate, proper, working security architecture a monarch to be killed in captivity. Thank you for the 25 students that have been released, or the doctor students that have been released, and all that. But come on, with this threat coming from the U.S. saying, "Look, you guys are under threat." The information coming about the threat, yes. Get prepared. Nigerians should be on high alert. Soldiers, Navy, military, police, NSCDC, you just name it. We should be on high alert. They said something give us adequate information. If you don't have a weapon, report. Strange characters, strange movement. You report. 
and let's see how they will handle it. Gentlemen, thank you so, so much, thank you. Thank you so much. for your wonderful analysis. <laughs>